We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Billings, Montana, as we get a chance to visit with the head football coach for the Rocky Mountain Batland Bears, Coach Chris Studstream, in his sixth season, heading into his sixth season with the program. Coach, it's a privilege to always get to visit with you today. Uh, last season, 6-4 and four record, uh, tough stretch during the middle of the season, but then you win the last three. And, uh, you know, I, I ask coaches every now and again for something like this, with a three-game winning streak heading into the next year, does something like that carry over? Can you talk about the season just a bit? Um, you know, I think we we got a big win at home against Dickinson, um, and then uh, the second game against Northern, we did lose our starting quarterback in that game, uh, and then we we caught a tough you know tough tough stretch of games right there, which is always true with the Frontier Conference. Um, and you got to be healthy, you got to bring your A game, and and with working in a new starting quarterback and. Um, I thought we had moments, you know, um, it was my fault that we lost the the Carroll game. Hats off to Carroll and what they did to, to come back in the fourth quarter. But I think uh, I got a little complacent um, on offense and I shouldn't have. Um, and then, you know, going into uh, C of I, uh, we we're up 21 to three at halftime and and didn't didn't close it out. And hats off to them for coming back and, and really um, taking that game Um you know, and so it just kind of went back and forth. You know, we had uh, we had some moments where I thought we were a conference championship caliber team and then some moments where we weren't. And so, um, you know, to, to win out the last three uh, was huge, I think, for our season, for our seniors. Um, but also, you know, I think it gives some confidence to guys in showing what we can do. I thought we put a lot of points up those last three games and then also uh, played really good defense. Um, but every year is a brand new year. Uh, and so we we know that we we lost a lot of key players, but have a lot of young guys and, and new guys that are going to step in and do a do a great job. You know, I think one of the things, as much as anything, I mean, it, it carries over into recruiting at least, if nothing else. And wow, you signed a huge recruiting class, sixty in February for signing day. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I think it's the new day and age of recruiting right now, to be honest with you. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's there's kids that for football, uh, I know other schools deal with it just like us, but we come in, you know, let's say August 1st and some kids by August 10th or 12th um, realize they don't want to play college football anymore. <laughs> you know, it was great to go through the recruiting process and um, we knew we had to have a bigger class this year just with how COVID worked out. And and there were some kids on our team that we didn't know if they were going to exercise that last year. There was seven of them um, and six of them did come back. Um, so we were preparing like they weren't going to come back. But then also uh, with the transfer portal and, and, you know, sometimes kids graduate early and doing those things. So uh, but I also felt like our coaches did a phenomenal job. Um, we had 20 eight signed before Christmas with 26 of those being Montana or Northern Wyoming kids. Um, and so really the numbers just kind of kept going, but every one of those kids uh, was high on our board, which is a good thing to have. I don't know how many of those kids you get to see in the spring, but uh, you, you know, you talked about losing some or a number to graduation. How did the spring go? Were you able to, to have good practices there with who you had? Yeah, it was good. We had about 85 kids. We did have some that were out, uh, whether it was surgery, um, you know, things in that nature, or we limited reps on some of our older guys that were coming back uh, just because they've, they've, I like to call it the high pitch count, you know, when they've been in college football for four or five years um, and that many spring balls, you, you really, you've kind of seen them a little bit. So uh, spring ball was good. You know, we, we did a lot of little things focused on individual play, um, some group stuff and really kind of broke it down um, early in the week, especially during spring ball, um, but was really excited and happy about the the outcome we had during spring ball. We're speaking now with Chris Dutstream from Rocky Mountain. I like that, by the way, coach, that high pitch count. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to give you credit when I use it next time, but, uh, but All I'm right. a lot. let's, let's look ahead now. 2024, not that far away. Graydon Buell is coming back. Luke Holcomb coming back. So you, you have somebody there to, uh, you know, nice, maybe some competition as well. And Joseph Dwyer had a bit of a breakout season in 2023. Tell us a, a little bit about the offense. Well, I think number one, you know, Graydon did a phenomenal job uh, the last three games, but played a couple games uh, prior than that, too, of, of getting his feet wet. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great leader, um, you know, is very competitive, uh, does, does, makes all the throws, can handle the offense, adequate runner. 
Um, and so his leadership is is huge for us. Um, you know, Trent Nobach, who got hurt game two of last year with the, the broken hip, will redshirt this year. Um, and so he's still in our quarterback room, but he'll he'll kind of be working back into it. Um, and then, you know, really we've got another three guys that are going to battle um, for the second spot, third spot, and hopefully they push Graydon to make him better or overtake the first spot as well. Um, you know, when it comes to the receivers, I think they're one of our most deep positions. Uh, we return a lot of guys that have caught a lot of balls and uh, have a lot of yards and things like that. Uh, and our offense is built on, you know, we're going to we're going to spread the ball out. It's kind of the Mike Leach theory of we don't really look at run the passes. We look at guys getting their touches. And so sometimes one game is higher for one guy and the next game it's something different for another guy. Um, where I've seen the most growth on offense is our offensive line. Um, I think we've got a, a good relationship with those guys. We've got a couple guys that have played a lot of football um, coming back, and they'll continue to grow. Um, and then the running back position is always going to kind of be by committee for us um, as we get going. And and so very excited uh, to see them. And um, I thought we had a good spring. You know, there were things that we wanted to work on and get accomplished and some new tweaks and gimmicks and things like that. But um you know, really thought, uh, really thought our guys battled and competed really hard, uh, and they're fun to be around. Coach, let me stay there just a little bit longer on offense. You talk about that line and the Frontier Conference. It's it's always going to be a tough schedule. I mean, game mm -hmm. in and game out. How big is it then to have a, an experienced uh, or very tough offensive line? Because you, I, I would imagine uh, you're going to see a ground game quite often. Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, they're. You know, the offensive line is the most important position group, in my opinion, um, throughout all of all of sports. Um, you know, as as many coaches have said, um, the offensive line uh, doesn't need anything from everybody else, but everybody needs something from the offensive line. Um, and so uh, that's a spot where we needed to, you know, build depth and build guys that um, we can comfortably play, you know, eight guys a game uh, because of those injuries and and getting worn down throughout a long season and, and tough opponents each and every week. You've got a lot of, of lines that I'm going to borrow, Coach. I, I, need to, <laughs> I, need, I need to listen in your locker room a time or two. I, I think that would be terrible. <laughs> That okay. one was that one was stolen, though. So okay. that's uh, that's from Harbaugh. That was from Jim Harbaugh. So, but it's it makes absolute sense. I Absolutely. mean, you know, that, that offensive line is the most important thing, um, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and they've all got to work together. And so, really building that depth and and making sure that guy those guys are a, a good solid unit for what we try to do offensively. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, Casey Barnett, he was a force in the secondary, and and last season, John Aragon. Uh, led the way for you, five sacks, uh, nearly 10 tackles for a loss. Talk a little bit about your defense and some of those guys coming back. Well, I'm really, really happy with Kaysan. Um, you know, what he does on the field, he's a quiet guy, but I've really seen his leadership grow, um, being vocal and things like that within the secondary. Um, he's a solid player. Uh, he's really good. You know, you, you kind of – Early on, we tried to, all right, if he plays for us, great. You know, we'll see what happens. And then, you know, we couldn't keep him off the field, um, and especially in the return game as well. Uh, he makes people uncomfortable back there. Um, but I think, you know, defensive-wise, that's the other side, you know, is the offensive line that is very, very important. Um, we're always going to preach make teams one-dimensional. Uh, and so John's a great, great young man, um, works extremely hard, very physical, very tough. Um, need his leadership to continue to grow and, and bring those other guys along with them. Uh, but we're looking at, you know, probably playing eight guys consistently on the defensive line to keep them fresh. Um, and we feel like uh, we've got a little bit of depth there that we can continue to rotate guys. You know, that's a, that's another thing. And I go back, I, I don't know exactly why I'm staying with the line so much coach, but that that's another thing in, in recent years, I, you know, you hear more and more about that, the, the depth of the defensive line, uh, you know, where you don't hear, I, at least I don't, I haven't heard it as much What with that particular room that the depth, because you do, you need to just keep the rotation there. And if you can't have a rotation, that's, it's going to be a challenge, no matter how good your linebackers, your secondary, everyone else is. If you don't, if you don't have depth in that category, you're in trouble. Yeah. And we, we really try to, I mean, if any one defense alignment's playing over 35 to 40 reps a game, then something's going on with our depth. You know, you want to be able to feel good about having three to four interior guys, having three to four, you know, defensive ends and things like that uh, to rotate and keep them, keep them healthy. Because again, this is a conference where 
you know, every week is is a battle. There's great coaches and great players across this conference, and uh, the conference is only getting bigger and expanding with better teams uh, as well. And so, um, you know, but that's a that that hopefully is a is a sign to our younger guys that's you know are in that you know fifth to eighth person in that rotation where they can say, hey, I can still get in and get you know twenty reps a game, um, where they can continue to grow. I mean, that's a lot for a freshman that freshman, sophomore, first year, if they play 15 reps a game, um, that's 150 reps over a 10 game season. That's almost two games um, that they're playing. But then from the older guys, that's also cutting off uh, two games from their body um, that they're not playing uh, spread out over time. So, uh, and we want to get after the quarterback and stop the run. um, And you got to do that with fresh guys. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about that uh, conference that you're talking about expanding almost even as we speak. Actually, I'm going to be talking about that here on the channel a little bit more tomorrow. But today, um, the Frontier Conference is expanding. You know what? Let us let let me save that. I, I didn't get to special teams. John, Austin Drake is coming back. Let me, let me ask you about him really quickly. Fairly effective for you as a short-range field goal kicker. Yeah, Austin does a great job. Um, you know, he's one that has really worked on his craft throughout the last couple of years, and he's very consistent. Um, I always tell our specialists that I don't care if you can make a 60-yarder, and uh, but then you turn around and miss a 25-yarder. You know, be consistent at where you're at. Just let us know what yard line we need to get to. Um, and we kind of know that with him. Uh, but we've got a we've got a competition. Um, we've got a couple guys that during spring ball and redshirted for us last year that have really – uh, stepped up. And so that'll be a competition going into the spring, just like every other position, you know, we're, we're a six and four football team from last year. So we've got to really step up and take that next step. Um, myself included, you know, I've got to, I've got to figure out ways to, to make us better and eight and two, nine and one, 10 and oh, uh, consistently. Um, but Austin does a great job. Uh, it'll be, it'll, it'll suck losing Wyatt Bresby, you know, the Swiss army knife, as I like to call them. Um, in the secondary and, you know, with kickoffs and, and things like that. But I really feel good about where we're at with our kickers. Uh, and then our long snapper, Tyler Anderson, you know, was a first year starter for us last year and had one bad snap. And uh, he does a tremendous job uh, getting the ball back there and being athletic to run down on punts and things like that. So uh, I think the battle will continue uh, at the kicking position and we might see a couple different guys. Um, you know, doing field goal, um, kickoff and punt and things like that. But we'll do everything we can to put the best guys out on the field. Well, now I'll, I'll ask you then about the the schedule. As uh, you all, a week zero game, actually a Thursday week zero game, you go on the road at Dickinson State, and that is a future conference opponent. So uh, still out of conference this season, week one uh, at home, your first home game, MSU Northern, then the first Frontier game as you go on the road at Carroll. So not really an easy way to start any way around right there, but uh, take us through the opening of the schedule. I love it. I think every time we can play Dickinson State, it's a great atmosphere at our place. It's a great atmosphere at their place. Um, I love the Thursday night game uh, to open up the season. I think it uh, um, gives you a couple extra days after that first game um, where guys can, you know, you can kind of take a day off or a day and a half off and um, after going through fall camp and start of school and things like that. But uh, Dickinson State's a great opponent. Um, you know, it came down to the wire last year, and they're physical. Um, they're tough. They're not going to beat themselves. They're extremely well coached. Um, and then they've got guys that will surprise you a little bit with their athleticism. Um, and they're that's why they're a you know, second-round playoff team, uh, first-round playoff team every year. And so we're excited to get them into the conference. And, um, you know, Northern with Coach Sowers up there continue to bring guys in that are believing in his culture and doing things uh, the way he wants it done. And so, um, you know, they continue to get better. Um, And then obviously on the road at Carroll, uh, always a tough place to play. And so uh, we've got top, you know, I'll I'll probably say two top 20, 25 matchups um, in the first three weeks. But right now, you know, we're focused on the summer of getting ourselves better and then getting better in fall camp. And so that's the, the big thing right now. I understand. Have to ask about schedule, Coach. I have to. Ask. Oh yeah, I, I, oh, I know. Yeah. St- still, just barely in the month of May right now. We're not quite to June yet. It's a little ways away. But and I agree with you. I like those Thursday night openers. I think that they're yeah they're great for for many reasons. So Thursday night, August 29th, on the road at Dickinson State again for one more year. This is a an out of conference game for you all, but that's mm-hmm. what will open things up. The Rocky Mountain Batlin Bears, Coach. Chris Studstream, thank you so much for taking time with us today here. Success to you all this season. We will be following along, but we appreciate you taking time with us here on the Summit. You bet. Anytime. Thank you. 